Well, Georgia voters are heading back to the polls for a second time in a month today to decide on a senator for the state. We're joined live now by John Beebe, the founder of the Democratic Engagement Exchange at Toronto Metropolitan University, to talk a little more about this race. So before we get into, uh, you know, the details here, let's set the stage here. This was just so close in the uh, midterms, John, that they've had to go to the runoff. Can you explain to the viewers what the runoff has entailed? Well, if you don't get 50 percent of the vote in Georgia, you have to go to a runoff. And neither candidate got 50 percent of the vote. There was a third party candidate who got, I think, about a little over 2 percent of the vote. So that was enough to make this very, very close race go into a runoff in Georgia. Has the campaign in the runoff been any different than the campaign uh, leading up to the midterms, John? Because, you know, we saw in the midterms, you know, uh, Democrats taking a lot of shots at, at Herschel Walker, while, of course, uh, Republicans were certainly attacking the incumbent uh, Warnock. Yeah. I mean, what's been interesting to see is that the Democrats are both going after Herschel Walker and also talking about what a great candidate they have. And what we see the Republicans doing is they're trying to make this a race not about Walker or or Hersh or um, any of the other candidates. They're trying to make it about Biden. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's one of the key differences we're seeing now. Herschel Walker actually hasn't been out campaigning that much. And his last election rally last night, he only had 75 people. Uh, he hasn't been out on the campaign trail where we see Warnock has been out in the hustle. He's been out there with Obama. We haven't seen Trump in, out there. Um, because they're, the Republicans are really trying to make this about Biden. It's interesting, John. So, so what's actually at stake now? Because we know that regardless of the outcome, technically and specifically, uh, the Democrats will have a, a slim, the slimmest of majorities possible in the House. But what's really at stake then? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the operative term. They're going to have a very slim majority in the Senate. And that means in, in the U.S., every senator has an independent you know, person. And they don't all follow party line. And so if you have the party, the Democratic Party leaders in the Senate, if they have one more vote to play with, they can lose somebody and they can still have a majority. Um, and it's like that's the key issue mm -hmm. here. It also speaks going forward into 2024. Absolutely. Now, the other thing, John, uh, for some viewers may not know, although it's hard to not hear stories about Herschel Walker or that campaign down south, he was kind of handpicked or certainly endorsed by former President Donald Trump, who we now know is going to be running in 2024 as well. So is any of the results tonight, could any of that potentially reflect on Trump? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, Trump absolutely handpicked Walker, uh, and he's the only reason that he's the candidate today. Um, but interestingly, over the last few weeks, we haven't seen or heard a lot from Trump in this election. Uh, and I think that's an indication that even he recognizes, which honestly is a little bit surprising, he recognizes that he is not an asset. Trump isn't in this race. I mean, that is interesting when you consider how boldly he came out before the midterm, sort of saying, if people win, it's going to be me, and if they lose, they're going to blame me, but they shouldn't. Uh, and even afterwards, he was trying to sort of put a spin on it that, you know, that the Republicans didn't necessarily do as badly uh, as, as sort of some people suggested they did, because it was in, in the Congress, at least, it was much closer than before. So then what are we to make, then, of what we may see tonight? I mean, for example, we haven't seen much of Walker. We haven't heard that much from Trump. If, for example, hypothetically, Warnock wins, what does that mean to Donald Trump 2024 then? Yeah, I mean, it means he has an uphill battle. Uh, if, if he can't have carry the weight in Georgia, which is a state obviously he cares a lot about, mm -hmm. uh, then that's going to be a problem for him. I mean, and I think the other big issue here is turnout. Uh, you know, are we going to see big turnout, you know, in this runoff primary after they've just had another election. Yeah, how motivated are the Georgians to get out and vote? That's a good question, too. Okay, John Beebe, really appreciate you breaking this down for us. He's the founder of the Democratic Engagement Exchange at Toronto Metropolitan University. It'll be interesting tonight. We'll watch the results. Appreciate this. Thank you.